Welcome to Action Taken, the podcast about relevant topics for both Black and Christian communities. This is a podcast for seasoned believers, those who have hidden the Word of God in their hearts, as David spoke in Psalm 119 and 11. I'm your host, Coach Laverne. That's Laverne without the E on the end. This is Lesson 28 with this episode entitled, The Protocols for Miracles, You Who Are Spiritual, Political Message. As always, the vision within must be allowed to penetrate without the ultimate vision, the ultimate agenda for the church is to get the bride of Christ ready for her bridegroom, Jesus. There may be other faith projects we will have to invest time in and in our generations, but until you see the heavens crack open and the trumpet sounds, the vision for the body of Christ will always be to have his bride ready for a wedding and on time. We hear constantly people saying Jesus is returning, Jesus is coming, and it is true, Jesus is returning. But nothing will happen until his bride without spot or wrinkle is ready to meet him at the altar. A bridegroom will wait all day if he knows his beautiful bride is ultimately coming down the aisle. So if Jesus appears to be delayed, it is because we are expecting the bride to get ready all on her own. Having said all that, in season two, April 24th to June 26th, is the season of the narrow way, the narrow path. The season meant to eliminate a lot of participants. In other words, cut out the fat, and in some cases, literally. If you are carrying more weight, then you should get your weight and your blood pressure down, your blood sugar down, your cholesterol down, etc. Be a person given to fasting and prayer. Don't take it for granted that you will succeed in this season simply because you love the Lord and you love and adore Him. The season is for the fit among us in spirit, soul, and body. Get the sin out of your life. That's if no one hasn't already told you. Well, as you know, I'll be doing two of these a day until the Lord tells me otherwise. And this one, my God. I am on vacation right now. I took three days off and I have waking off, so it's like having five days of vacation. Um... And this message is so tough that I'd rather be at work than give it. <laughs> I, am on vac- <laughs> I am on vacation, and I'm telling you, it, it, it's just, you know how you have to give somebody bad news and you don't feel like give, you don't feel good about giving bad news? That's how I feel right now. That's how I feel right now. I mean, I literally can empathize with this person. I literally can empathize with this person. And I feel very sad. I I really do feel very sad for this person. I really do. Because um, there are a lot of people that respect this person, that adore this person. Other people, not so much. Um... I respect what he tried to do. It's just he did not have an anointing to do it. And that's how I know it wasn't God. But this was one of those you had to take a wait and see attitude about it. Um, I guess you wonder what I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, the 45th president of the United States. And it's not his fault. This is not his fault. What got him to go down this path to the presidency is not his fault. But I'm going to walk you through some things. It's only three points. It's real short. And, um, yeah. I'm like, I'm not... I'm really not pleased with this. Um, Yeah. I'm just making sure I put everything in and that's supposed to be in this recording. My first point is avoid feeling sad that Trump got pulled into the presidency. And I do. Um, and see, this is how you have to, 
he is victim to something that a lot of us could have easily been a victim of. But because he was not in the church um, long enough to have people do this to him, he was caught unawares. Um, see, in this last, in this end age, this these end time age, a prophecy can be given. It can use your name. It can, oh, Lord Jesus, I don't want to say this like this. It can use your name. It can tell you specific details about your life that will convince you convince you that it is so. Um, and wow. My God. I saw, like I said, I saw the vision of the prophecy by Kim Kalint. And I hear the other prophecies that other people give. But they're asking this man to do something that had they not stroked his ego, he would have never in his wildest dreams ever done. And there are many people around this country willing to bow down to this prophecy. Um, there's a lot of talk about him coming back into the White House in August of this year. And that would mean there would be no election. That would be, there would be some sort of military coup. Um, that would mean there would be a lot of bloodshed. That would mean that the Constitution and all that it stands for will be made null and void. Um, that would mean that all those who say they love this country and the Constitution and all that it stands for um, have converted their love into something else. As I've said in another recording, if you prop him up in that White House outside of the regular elections that we have in this country, you are creating a king. And once you start put this path, you cannot get off of it. It's not a one-off where, okay, we have Donald Trump put in there and, you know, we take uh, Joe Biden out and put Donald Trump in and then there's an election. Well, why would you have an election in 2024 when you didn't need an election to prop him back up in there? What, you don't think that God isn't powerful enough to put his person in the White House? You who are spiritual. The word is the word. Okay. So... Wow. Oh. But although I feel sad for him, and I empathize with him because you can get pulled into some stuff. If you let people give you these prophecies and you don't have an ear to hear of your own where you can go and discern this and all you're using is your intuition, you can get pulled into something that your life will be shipwrecked. At least it's church people that'll do it to you. And so what if they have money? Who knows how they got that money? 
and um, the prophetic is at times very pathetic because it will leave people in such a devastated state that they don't know how to come back. If they don't have the Lord's help, they won't know how to come back. And that's how I feel, in uh, how I sense Donald Trump is in that position. He's had a lot of people prophesy. I've, I've seen like hordes of people laying hands on him. Um, but at the end of the day, he has to be the one that comes to the Most High God and get his instructions like everybody else. That may mean you have to spend a lot of time with the word. And I know as president of the United States, he didn't have time to do all that. He might have read the Bible, you know, even daily. Could have had a daily devotional. Probably had a Bible study in the church, in, a, in the White House. But when it comes time to get a word, you've got to be skillful with it. Coming from a person who has, in many times, shipwrecked her own life because she did not stay in the Word, was in the Word and out of the Word and in the Word and out of the Word. Um, yeah. You can shipwreck your life and then you're hearing these prophecies and they may be accurate, but if you're not, the rest of your life is not aligning up with the Word. It, you, you, find, you can find your life shipwrecked. So I, I, I empathize, not only just sympathize, but I empathize because I can picture myself in that situation where if you don't have an ear to hear what the Lord is speaking and you have to go on your own intuition where your own, I mean, and this is the thing about it. Donald Trump is a very intuitive person, very intuitive. I don't take anything from him. And, um, It is um, amazing, had an amazing brand. His hotels and other business businesses, some of them weren't so great, but like when it came to the hotels and the restaurants and things like that, I mean, the, there was nothing better. There was nothing better. Okay? So this is not a stupid man being, you know, just being necessarily quote unquote propped up. I'm using that word casually, but in business, in his lane, there was nobody better. In his lane, there was nobody better. However, you take him out of his lane, which is like anybody, you take them out of the lane, they're not so good. And there were many, God, I don't want to say it like this. I wanted to say it. Deceptive people who may not have been deceptive with him, but they have been deceptive with others and their gift, oh Jesus, betrayed them. And the one time they needed to speak, I'm not even gonna say anymore. I'm just gonna go on to the next thing. Um, deal with President Trump, Trump receiving bad advice that got him into the White House is the same advice that would encourage him to break the seal of the Constitution. They're talking about putting him back in the White House in August. Do you really want to be like Vladimir Putin? Do you really want to be like Vladimir Putin? <clears throat> who can um, abuse his people because of power. That's not a good example. It's not a good example. And when you take that oath of office as a president, the first thing they say to you is, do you a promise to uphold the Constitution and all that it stands for? The 
Constitution calls for general elections for the president every four years. And there's a midterm election every two years. Okay. Now. In August, all of that, all of the Constitution will be up for grabs. Everything that it stands for, everything that it has upheld for the past 200 years will be up for grabs. Because everything will be null and void. Everything will be questionable after that moment when you put him back in the White House in August. I'm not saying if or when. I... I I have no pony in this race, okay? But I'm telling you, you have given him all this bad advice and have prophesied things that would put this country in jeopardy. All because you want your words to be accurate. You're willing to make a man upend this country just so you can be right. You would cause the people to rise up like something from the French Revolution. All because you want to be right. So, if you cause him to break that constant, the seal of that constitution, once you get him in, you better keep him in. And you go, you think you're busy now? You're going to be prophesied night and day. Because there's a reason why politicians, when they are in college, many of them, not all of them, but many of them, take political science because politics is a science, not an art, science. You have to know about balance of powers. You have to know about the extent of the Constitution. You have to know which each branch of the Constitution stand for and how far its reach goes for each branch how they all balance each other. One is not more powerful than the other. There's a reason for all of it. But if you put him back in there in August, all of that is up for grabs. And who's to say you'll still, and a lot of you who don't think you have a pony in this race and you're receiving government funds of some kind, like Social Security, and Medicare and Medicaid and all that, well, that may be up for grabs too. Because you, you so hate the government. Okay, put him back in there. Let's see how good he'll do you. All you have sit there, I'm gonna put my life on the line. Okay, go ahead, put him back in there. See how good he'll do you. Because the way things are is made not for poor people and not for middle class people. This country is made for wealthy people. You don't have any skin in the game to be climbing up the side of a building, scaling it, and disrupting things. But if you want to, go ahead. Let's just do our summary. Avoid feeling sadness that Trump got pulled into the presidency. It wasn't difficult to pull him into the presidency. You can see he'd been dancing around the idea for some time. Um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't difficult to persuade him to do it. But the primary thing. Receiving bad advice 
uh, I've always said this, and I, it's an observation that I, I believe is true. You can get the smartest man in the White House as president, but he's only as smart as the people, <clears throat> the people around him, like his advisors and the people on his cabinet. Okay. And whoever is the dominant voice that is that per, that is that president's brain. I'm serious. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like Obama. I liked him. Not because he's black, but I liked him. But the point I'm making here is that even smart as Obama was, and he knew the Constitution because he taught the Constitution at University of Chicago. All right? And... Even Obama, if he did not have good advisors around him, his presidency would have looked pretty bad too. They said that they said that about they said oh like the George W. Bush, not George H. W. But George W. You know was tall, the small one. Um, was a smart man. Is a smart man, but if you put stupid people around him, and I said this when I remember when his uh, one of his closest advisors when she left. Karen Hughes, I think her name was, when she left, and I said, there goes his presidency right there. Because she was basically his brain. There's some people who, like, they work in, and they work really well together, and they work in such tandem that they help the person process things in a way that they understand how to get things done. If you can find that in a, a business partner, or you can find that in a spouse, that's really good. Like a perfect example of that is um, uh, Lyndon Johnson, his wife, uh, Lady Bird, was like that. And she, she could help him process things in a way that um, would help him present himself well, um, process ideas about uh, what's going on in the presidency. Uh, strangely enough, um, I hate to even admit this, but um, what's her name? Nancy Reagan was like that for Ronald Reagan. Okay. Nancy Reagan was like that for Ronald Reagan. So some people think in this, they, usually it's a wife or a spouse. If you get a spouse that does that, then you're really lucky. Um, sometimes it's a friend, a college buddy, something like that. And if you're also in the same bit, or you can get certain advisors are like that. And they, they understand how your brain works. They understand how your energy flows. And they can help you process things to get things done. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Trump did not have that. And so it was destined to fail. There are a lot of things that got done. However, um, There wasn't the kind of, you know, people think, oh, well, just running the, pre the presidency is like a business. In some ways, yes, but it does have the, the um, limitations of the Constitution, which you have to uphold because you're the president. That's what you agree to when you put your hand on that Bible on Inauguration Day. But, um, yeah. You're going to have to decide, Mr. Trump, whether or not you want to break that seal off of the Constitution. If this really is worth it, have you really thought this thing through? Because as once it's broken, you better start looking at your kids and your grandkids for who's going to take your place after you're done. Because, and, and then people are like, oh yeah, we can get Ivanka. Okay. But it is not going to be an easy deal for them. If you love your kids, and I think you do, you wouldn't do this to the ki your kids. You wouldn't do this to your grandkids. But like I said, you're gonna, if you want to break the seal, go ahead. Because here, there's going to be some people on this earth, they're going to survive regardless of what happens. Kingdom people will survive. A lot of church people won't survive, but a lot of kingdom people will. You can count on that. So let's do our, our corporate promise for those who can receive this. Because this is more for me than for anybody else. Because 
you know, I, I, like I said, I really do empathize with being pushed into something. And then once you're out there, there ain't no help. You need the help of your own Holy Ghost speaking into your own life. And that was not something that Donald Trump had opportunity to train himself in. This is being a Christian is not an easy job. And you have to have a hearing ear. You have to be able to flow in the prophetic. You're a very intuitive man, but you did not have your prophetic ear opened before you went into the White House. Okay. I mean, that the presidency is a job that's hard anyway. Yeah. But hey, you, you want to break that seal? Go ahead. But I hope you're prepared with, with what comes afterward. You have to be ready for what comes after because here's the deal. And all that you, all you who are willing to back in. You have to keep backing him. It's a hard way to back somebody when they can't stand on their own two feet. So I'm not going to worry about you no more. I may talk about you some more. Not in a cold, cruel way, but you who are spiritual, who should have guided him and led him. You're going to have to keep praying for him. Not so he would be strong and tough, but that he'd be humble and that he would have a hearing ear and restore him because he's about to commit a serious, serious sin. But you who are spiritual, really spiritual, not the ones who pretend to be spiritual, but you do all this dark stuff in the behind the scenes. And then you want to get and prophesy in the president's ear and lead him off course. Because you got a cute little waist and big boobs. Let me just read this and be done. I will help you to avoid feeling sadness that Trump got pulled into the presidency. I will help you to understand that he had been flirting with the idea of running for the presidency, so it wasn't difficult to persuade him. I will help you to deal with President Trump receiving bad advice, which got him into the White House, it is the same bad advice that would encourage him to want to break the seal of the Constitution. I've spoken it, and it shall surely come to pass. Um, that's all I have for you today. I'm your host, Coach Laverne. That's Laverne without the E on the end for action taken. And if you didn't know, this podcast can only also be viewed on YouTube in its entirety. So if you watched it on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and select the bell notification for when new action taken podcasts drop. Our next broadcast is June 13th. Have a good and prosperous day. See you soon.